Hello, welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be talking about sensitivity. Are you sensitive? Maybe you've heard the words HSP, highly sensitive person. Maybe you've heard empath or empathic. If you clicked on this video, chances are you're in touch with sensitivity and you wanna know more about it. Thank you for being here. My name is Marjorie. Welcome to my channel, where we discuss all things personal development, intentional living, and creativity. If you're excited to learn more about sensitivity, give this video a thumbs up. This is a brand new channel. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for being here. All right, let's dive into sensitivity. Do you sense or feel subtleties that other people seem to miss? Or perhaps you're in a relationship with or friends with someone who identifies as sensitive and you want to support them on a deeper level. If none of this applies, no worries. You can click on out of here. I have some other videos you might be more interested in. If this does apply to you or someone you love, then stay tuned. So that you understand exactly what I mean by sensitivity, let me explain. Sensitivity can be present on three different levels, probably more than that, but these are the three we're gonna focus on today. Physical sensitivity, that is like sensory, the five senses sensitivity, that's the first way. Second would be emotional sensitivity. That would be feelings, emotions. And third, we have intuitively or abstract sensitivity. That's the most fun one in my opinion and we dive full on into the weird zone. I know you can't wait for that. So what qualifies me to talk about this topic? Well, I happen to be sensitive on all three levels. Lucky me. I need another sip of matcha for this. I'm not just doing this video to like talk about myself or for some sort of like self gratification. No, I'm doing this because there are a lot of other people who are sensitive and they really, really struggle with it y'all. And I think I have some insights that may bring you greater clarity and may help you to see your sensitivity for what it is and that is a superpower. It is a gift. It is a God-given ability. We can use it to help ourselves and to see things that others may not be aware of and help others. I often feel like I like exist on a whole different plane than anybody else. I feel a little like an alien, like I don't belong here. I just take in so much information. It can actually be pretty overwhelming at times. More information than most people, and I often process in ways that are not verbal, not words. I process a lot of times in visuals, vibes, symbols. It's really weird and hard to explain. I know that may make zero sense to many of you, but to some of you, you're going like, thank God, it's not just me. In all seriousness though, understanding and becoming more aware of my sensitivity and how to use it, how it benefits me and others has been one of the most profound and life altering experiences of my entire life. It's been a learning process though, and I've taken in tons of information. I'm one of those people like when I want to know about something, I'm going to seek. So I've read things from like the Bible on spiritual gifts. I've read hippy dippy woo woo stuff. I've read um, psychology based stuff like the HSP stuff. I've taken bits and pieces from everything and kind of applied what makes the most sense to me. Basically understand how I operate in the world. And you know, now that I mentioned it, labels are fairly meaningless to me. Yes, I'm an INFJ. Um, yes, I'm probably what some people call an empath, an HSP, clear sentient. Like there's all these different words you can put on it. Um, to me, those are just labels. Um, I just know, and maybe some or all of those qualities that fit into those different labels apply to me. I just know what my experience is. That's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. And hopefully it will bring you some clarity to your own sensitivity. First, we're gonna talk about emotional sensitivity. And this is probably the form of sensitivity that has the most awareness around it. It's the one that most people are the most familiar with. And it deals with emotions. You can be sensitive to your own emotions, to the emotions of others, or both. I experience both personally, but I most relate to feeling other people's emotions. This is one of the ways MBTI helped me so much to learn about extroverted feeling. It's my second highest function. More on cognitive functions later, but 
this gave me so much understanding into how I operate and why it is more common for me personally to notice how everyone else is feeling before I can process how I myself feel about a situation or a thing. It's a weird problem to have actually. Like, is it them or is it me? This was super confusing to me for many, many, many years. This is not something that people were talking about back in the 80s and 90s when I grew up, and so I felt so weird about it. I'm glad there's more awareness around extroverted feeling and empathy and being in touch with people's feelings around you. It's been really helpful for my own understanding. I wish I had had it earlier in life. You can also be sensitive to your own personal feelings. This would be introverted feeling, your own emotions. Um, some of the types that may identify most with this would be like ISFP and INFP. They have FI hero, that is introverted feeling as their first function, that is their go-to. Um, ESFP and ENFP have introverted feeling as their parent function, that is their second. Those are some of the types that may identify more with this. Diving into personality science really helps me make a lot of sense out of this. We'll be diving more into both extroverted feeling and introverted feeling in future videos as cognitive functions, but just know if you're sensitive to emotions, whether it be your own or someone else's, this is definitely a thing. The second area of sensitivity I want to talk about is physical sensitivity. And there's a term that's come around in the last few years, HSP, stands for highly sensitive person. From what I can gather, some of emotional sensitivity may come into play with this, but from what I've read, a lot of this deals with five senses type overstimulation, and I definitely relate to this. Bright lights, crowds, lots of people, um, strong smells, loud noises, anything like that. It's very, it doesn't take me very long at all, personally, to get super overstimulated and just suddenly get the desire to just like retreat and go somewhere quiet and um, get my energy back. Someone else I know that's one of the sensor doms um, that's in my family, she hates to wear pants with buttons like blue jeans. Um, the, the, just anything that cuts into her, she cannot stand. So it really can be any type. It doesn't, you don't have to be one of the feeling types or one of the intuitive types. Any type can have any of these types of sensitivities. MBTI just helps us kind of make sense of it from a cognitive function standpoint, and it can kind of put words to what your experience already is. Another thing that has helped me understand my physical sensitivity more is cognitive axes. This is a little technical, but in short, our sensing and our intuition functions are on an axis with one another. And so my type, like the INFJs, the INTJs, um, the types that are more polarized towards intuition are going to have inferior sensing. And so I think things just creep up on me. I don't notice how the external environment is affecting me until I'm done, until I'm like already very close to or at tap out point, like I need to bolt. So a lot of times like it's very extreme for me. I can like not notice the physical environment at all. I can like not see people that I know because I'm in my head processing something or I can just get totally overwhelmed all at once. This uh, happened to me a lot in college. So if I went out with my friends and we were at a bar or at a crowded house party or something like, I would always be the first one to just get tapped out. Like I'm done, I'm ready to go to bed. That was a running joke. If any of my college roommates are watching this, I gotta go to bed. I was always the first one who was like, I'm done. There are, and I'm learning about through my children now, there are sensory processing disorders that may come into play with some of this where it's just you process the sensory environment a little bit differently. Lots of factors can affect this. Just know getting overwhelmed or struggling with physical sensitivity is definitely a thing. You're not weird. It's a thing and there are ways to deal with it. It's definitely something that many people struggle with of all different personality types for a variety of reasons. Number three, intuitive sensitivity. I saved the weirdest and the best for last. Intuitive and abstract sensitivity refers to people who pick up information with kind of like a sixth sense in ways that are not explainable by the five senses. It's not fully understood. Some of us do it subconsciously. This type of sensitivity is very mysterious, yet very real for those of us who experience it. We can feel, sense, or see 
I'm talking a seeing like in our mind's eye information beyond what is possible to pick up with the five senses. Sometimes the five senses can feed our intuition, like we'll pick up on pattern recognition and draw conclusions from patterns that we see with our five senses. We just know stuff, y'all, even if we don't know how we know it. Oh, this one is so hard to explain, but I have just learned to trust it like crazy. This was so validating to me to read when I first discovered typology and that I was an INFJ. Um, it made so much sense to me to have explanations for being the way that I am. I've always known that I just know stuff. I don't really know how I know it. Um, it's just been the way that I've always operated ever since I was a small child. I know a lot of you can relate to this. One thing that is very common, especially as children before we have confidence and in our abilities, we will pick up on something intuitively that does not match up with our five senses physical reality. It can cause us to really like doubt ourselves and have insecurity and just really think like, why, why do I have this feeling that I can't shake? I know I have talked myself out of my initial intuitive impressions so many times over the years, only for things to play out exactly how I thought they would with my first gut instinct. As far as typology, there are four types most likely to identify with this. I've already mentioned INFJ and INTJ. We operate with introverted intuition. It's probably the most mysterious cognitive function. Like I said, we just know stuff, we pick up on it subconsciously, and then we have like these aha moments where it just kind of bubbles up to our awareness. Then you have the extroverted intuitive DOMs. That's the ENFPs and the ENTPs. The extroverted intuition is a little bit different and we'll get into this more in a future video. The extroverted intuitives are also extremely adept at picking up on things and subtleties and they're very aware of what other people want. And the extroverted intuitives are more aware of the possibilities. Both types can kind of play things out into the future and kind of see how things are going, ha trajectory, that's the word I'm looking for. Both types are very adept at trajectory. And I'm definitely not going around trying to like figure out everybody's business. Impressions come at me personally when I'm not doing anything. Uh, most often they're accurate when I'm relaxed, when I'm not attached to a certain outcome. I find what makes my intuition most off is when I myself have like a personal stake in the outcome. A lot of times we get attached to how we want something to go and that really, for me personally, can cloud my intuition. So why does sensitivity even matter? Because we see things that other people completely miss. Things that don't even register for other people. We see potential, we see possibility. We are visionaries, change makers. It can be super valuable to bring some of our impressions into the collective awareness. It can help create new systems, new ways of being, new technologies, improve people's lives and make things better for everybody. Many of us have learned to channel our sensitivity into creative things. We write, we may create music or art, we make things. Some of us make the actual physical structures that shape reality for everybody else. And many of us can help others see the one best path forward if we are brave enough to speak up about it. Growing up sensitive, I'm gonna need another sip of matcha for this. I knew that I could sense like duality and dishonesty very early on, both in my peers and in adults. This was not always convenient or comfortable. It could be awkward at times. At some point, I realized that not everybody could do this and I just kept my impressions to myself most of the time. Also, it caused me to gravitate toward people who were more straightforward, honest, authentic. I didn't have much regard for things that a lot of people did like socioeconomic status, race, class, like I don't, I'm not trying to sound like a saint. I'm sure at some point I wasn't perfect. Most of that stuff was, especially at the earliest age, was pretty meaningless to me. I just wanted true connections with honest people. I wanted to connect with people on a meaningful level and that is surprisingly harder than you would think it is. I still struggle with this to this day. Making true authentic friends is really hard as a child or an adult. When I, when I was a child, my desire for the true connections clashed with sort of like these societal norms. That was extremely frustrating and sad to me. 
And also my insecurity caused me to like try and talk myself out of my initial impressions a lot. It caused a ton of self-doubt, overthinking, and just being really insecure. I pulled away from people a lot. I was always extremely outgoing and friendly, but I just felt like I had very few like true friends. I still struggle with this quite honestly. It can be pretty isolating to feel like you understand everyone else pretty well, but that hardly anybody understands you. Can anybody else relate to that? I'm willing to bet that at least some of you are. Probably the most likely types to feel this way are ENFP and INFJs. I'll do a future video on this in depth, but basically, our function stack is the exact opposite of what our current culture validates the most. We go intuition, feeling, thinking, and then sensing. And our culture values sensing, thinking, feeling, and then intuition. We're basically cultural values flipped upside down. That can cause a lot of isolation and to feel like an alien and like you just don't belong here. Adulting as a sensitive person. I'm gonna need a double sip of matcha for this. Wow, like dating in my early and mid 20s was just like a special type of torture. I could usually sense when someone like lost interest in me, um, even if I couldn't explain why. I would try and fix it indirectly, of course, because I couldn't explain my impressions to them. And yet other times I was completely oblivious to where the other person was at because I just let my overthinking mind take over. And I would end up like talking myself out of some painful truth that I had picked up on initially. All of that like overthinking, battling my intuition, it caused me to be pretty insecure and dating was like super hard. Or conversely, I would conclude five minutes into a first date that like this was a hopeless waste of time. I would try to remain like open and polite, but after I've seen something that my intuition like rules out a future with this person, like I found it really hard to stay present in the date. As an adult though, I also started to recognize a lot of the perks of being more sensitive. In multiple of my corporate jobs, I kind of became known as like the unconventional problem solver. I could find innovative solutions that pretty much didn't occur to anyone else. Also at work, although I preferred to work alone, I noticed my ability to work with almost anybody. Even the people who were like, had the reputation for being the hardest to work with. I noticed that I could work with people that had the reputation for being abrasive or like hard to work with. As long as people were straightforward and not like conniving or backstabbing or dishonest, I could get along with them at work. I also noticed that wherever I was, I was the proverbial shoulder to cry on. This could be at work, it could be in my friend group. Often it's like in line at the grocery store, I would have strangers like spilling their guts to me randomly. Advising and counseling others is something that comes very naturally to me. Um, I've had to be careful with this though because it takes discernment. You don't just need to run around giving everybody advice that doesn't ask for it or even they do ask for it. I do have like this sometimes, not all the time, this God-given ability to just like say the very thing that someone needs to hear the very second they need to hear it. It just feels like a God thing, like divine wisdom being delivered to someone who really needed to hear it through me, which is really cool. Connecting with others is something that was super easy for me, even though I'm an introvert and a little more on the shy side. My introverted intuition combined with extroverted feeling made it very easy to connect to almost anybody. I'll see if I can like kind of explain it here. What I do is I use my introverted intuition to kind of like soak in where someone is at intuitively. I observe kind of like their interaction style and then I will mirror it and bounce it back to them in their own way. This is not something that I was really aware that I was doing um, until I read more about it in MBTI and I was like, oh yeah, I totally do that. And it's not meant to be in like an inauthentic way. I know INFJs get the reputation for being chameleons. I prefer to use it more as a mechanism for connecting. It is also very easy for me to be in a wide variety of social situations where I can just kind of observe and adapt to myself accordingly. If there's an extroverted person in the group like commanding all the attention, I'm more than happy to like let them have the center of attention and just do their thing. If things get a little awkward and too quiet, it is also very easy for me to kind of step up and play the extroverted role and kind of get the conversation going. There's a third option. It takes discernment and time to practice this, but 
Sometimes you don't have to do anything. You can just sit back and let things be as they are. Are you ready to dive even deeper into the weird zone? I'm gonna go there. Reading the collective. Okay, this is something that I do. I didn't know that other people did it other than like psychics and stuff. I didn't know other people did this until I started talking to other people in MBTI community. I can read the energy of collective things. Churches, companies, cities, neighborhoods, rooms of people, all of these things give very specific impressions to me. Taking the temperature of the room when I walk in is something that I always do, even if it's like subconscious. And then like certain geographical areas, like countries or cities will have like these personality traits that I notice. Almost as if they're like beings unto themselves. Um, I'm not gonna get political, but election season in the USA and inauguration day are always super intense to me. No matter who I voted for, whether it's the person being inaugurated or not, it's always super intense and I have to like be really aware of when to like turn things off and not engage. Timelines and predictions. This is not fortune telling. I just wanted to be clear with that. The future I don't believe is fixed. I believe it is bendable and there are multiple potential timelines that can be changed based on our own current choice points. But I can usually get like a vibe for a person's trajectory. I can kind of look at their past and current choice points and like how that's gonna play out into the future. I'm really good at the pattern recognition and like playing those things out and seeing which timelines are like either best or most likely to occur. Seeing pivotal choice points for myself and other people um, it's like a weird little skill set, and but it's pretty powerful when you know how to put it to good use. It can be painful at times though. Sometimes you see a future coming that's not so rosy and there are things that I get impressions on that I don't want to be right about. Okay, let's get to some practical applications. I think that these right here will help some of you that identify as sensitive. Number one, practice discernment. A good first step in this, especially if you're one of the intuitive or abstractly sensitive people is to get a good sense of your yes and your no feeling. I personally get specific physical sensations when something is a yes and when something is a no. It's hard to describe, but it is something that you can start practicing for yourself right now. Ask yourself yes and no questions and just become aware of what it feels like in your body. Another piece of discernment is just because I pick up on something doesn't mean that I have to vocalize it or act on it at all. I have learned to just let things go. Sometimes letting things go and just not saying anything is the best and wisest thing for everyone. You can always tuck it into your little file and it'll be there later if you need it. Also, this will be helpful for the other um, maybe extroverted intuitives, maybe extroverted feelers to learn the difference between your own feelings, your own desires, and someone else's. It's a weird problem to have, like I said earlier. I have several visualizations I do for this. I don't have to like sit down and close my eyes or anything like that. I can do it with my eyes open as I'm going about my day. But I will picture two like volume knobs on the stereo. One in my mind's eye is labeled me, the other is everybody else. And I can like picture my hand turning down everybody else and turning myself up. Of course, I could go the other way if I wanted to, but for me personally, it's usually turning down everybody else and listening to myself that I most need help with. It sounds kind of kooky, but this visual, it actually helps me. So give it a try. Good boundaries are another fantastic practice for everyone, but especially for sensitive people. I am so careful about guarding my attention and who I let into my space. I'm careful even about like TV shows and movies that I watch, music that I listen to. I'm careful about social media accounts that I follow. Um, not only am I good about the boundaries of like keeping things out that I don't want in my energy, but I also seek out inspiring inputs to bring in. I'm very picky about like musicians that I listen to. I'm picky about books that I read. I've become more in tune with like when I need to turn off the news. I have really practiced saying no to things when something is not aligned with my own internal values. I could do like a whole series of videos on boundaries and maybe I will. But for now, just be aware that boundaries are a form of self-love and self-care. And speaking of self-care, that's another piece of it having a self-awareness to know when you need self-care. 
Sensitive people are more likely to need time alone to recharge, kind of withdraw, and um, to fill ourselves back up. For myself personally, I know if I've been interacting with a large crowd for a long amount of time, I'm gonna need time to step back and recharge. I also know myself that I need physical movement. Currently, I love to walk outside um, with like music or podcast. I love to swim, I love low impact dance and yoga. I'm not super athletic by any means, but moving my body helps so much. It's gonna sound weird to some of you, but some of you I know will resonate with this. I get stuck energy when I don't move my body for too long and I start to feel like really super like off. Exercise, it's like it opens up all the channels and things just start flowing again. I know that sounds super weird. It's just a feeling that I have. It's something that I experience, and hopefully at least some of you can relate to that. In conclusion, thank you for watching this. I hope that this helped you in some small way. Maybe you had an aha moment. Maybe you got more clarity on your own sensitivity. Whatever the case, I would love to hear about it. Leave me a comment below and let me know. If your sensitivity has felt like a burden, I hope this has given you some insights. Maybe um, to see like how much of a gift this truly is, how much it, it can be a superpower. Hugs and high fives to all of my sensitive brothers and sisters out there. Go use those gifts. Thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, if you learned something, maybe gain some clarity or aha moments, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos on personal development, intentional living, and creativity. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I post a new video. Thanks again for being here. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.